Hello and welcome to another budget and legit video. This is part two of this for focus tow bar wiring job. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wire in the tow bar, I'm going to leave that for part two, and I'm going to wire in the caravan section, we'll leave that for part three. It just makes the videos kind of nice and easy. The most important thing is when you're wiring anything is you want everything nice and neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and feed it into places where the wire isn't going to get caught, it's not going to get ripped off if you drive down kind of a, a back road where there might be something sticking out in the middle of the road because the last thing you want is to do all this and then for something like that to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm actually feeding this through the tow bar hopefully we've got enough wire, especially in the caravan side of things so as you can see I fed it through the tow bar I'm going to put a cable tie here so there's going to be a cable tie around these two, holding in these wires so it can't go everywhere. I can do that now. So that's nice and neat. We know, you know, this is going to get hit before the wires get hit. Now the next thing is we're going to bring both wires up as far as we can. So they actually come up through the tow bar. I might have to show you on the other side. Now, I'm just going to get another cable tie there first. Just got enough on the caravan side of things. Hopefully you can see a bit better now what I mean. So I'm going to get the wires up past, kind of on top of the tow bar, and then put a cable tie here. So again, anything's going to hit the tow bar before it hits the wires. And not only that, it's nice and neat, it looks nice and neat, and it will save you problems down the line. So again, I hopefully get one here too. Now, and then, I think the best thing to do... So you have to be careful because there's a, there's a rubber socket here which you might not be able to see. This is the problem now, just getting... Just where my hand is, just above here, just like this, there's like a rubber um, socket where we can put a hole through so we can feed the wires inside because that's what we need to do. We need the wires inside the car now. And if you put the wires kind of through here, the problem is, what can happen is they can rub and get caught and cut. Now, if we put them through, it looks like we're going to have to, but if I cable tie them so they can't move, that will be okay. But it's, it's, it's vital. I think that's the only way we can really do it. Because even if we come back through here, we're still going to have like a rub point there. So I reckon if I put them through here, together like that, but then cable tie them, so we don't have a problem. If the hole was a bit small, I could put some sealer around, but the hole is too big for that. So what I need to do now is I need to get this rubber grommet down, because there's already a wire going through it, and I need to make the hole bigger so I can feed these up through it. And then I can worry about cable tying this to kind of there somewhere. I don't think there's any other way really around it because um, I have to come up through here because I need to get to the light to wire in the tow bar so I have to get at least there yeah I think that's going to be the best way so let's just pull this rubber down now hopefully you can see that so there's the rubber I just need to make the hole bigger So we can fit our wires through and then reset the rubber up so as you can see that's one and now hopefully this should be able to be forced through not 
quite. So we'll just make the hole bigger ourselves. Now, if you don't have a rubber part anywhere, oh, what's the one? In the car, and you just have a hole. You can put the wires through and put some sealer in and around so it holds it. But the hole doesn't really want to be too big because the sealer won't last if the hole is too big. Now, we have that through. So now we can feed the wires through and then just move this out of the way. And I can grab the wires up inside. Then we can work inside. Now, and I can hopefully, well, not hopefully, I will, I'll cable tie this to there so that can't move and if that can't move it's not going to rub but if it can move it will rub it will cut the wire and we're going to have a problem but I can't really see any other way around it as long as my cable ties don't move we're not going to have a problem now I've changed my mind but unfortunately I don't think I was recording so I don't know how this is going to go in the edit but what I did is I got an old piece of a, a pipe big rubber pipe off an engine and I threaded the wires through the pipe and I've then cable tied it so we've got an extra layer of protection this isn't going anywhere this isn't gonna move it's not gonna do absolutely anything so that's what I did now we're gonna get to the top of the wires and wire it in right so as you can see these are the wires that are sticking into the car now we're gonna leave the car around one to the side for the minute we're not gonna, we're gonna concentrate on getting the tow bar one wired up now it's very simple, if, you, if your car is CAN bus wiring you need this special little box. Now there's loads of different boxes out there but you need some sort of box to stop things from going wrong. But it is vitally important that this box has its own power source direct from the battery. Um, if you try and take it from anywhere else you can cause serious problems. So take the power supply direct from the battery. We're going to do that last. And what you get is you get a, a wire that clips into it and we've got the wire that goes from the tow bar very straightforward you have on it it says reverse fog brake left hand side right hand side indicators left indicators right it says on the box we need to put them wires into the box and then clip this wire into the box as simple as that and then this side has to connect to where our lights are so that's how it works so we have the wires coming out of the box fit onto our light, our light harness inside the car. And then the wires coming from the tow bar go into the box. It's, it's really as simple as that. Um, and like I said, you know, it gives you the, the, the pinouts here. A is reverse. Now it says C2, but if you've got LEDs on your car, that's, that's for an LED car. This car doesn't have LEDs, but it has Campbell's wiring. So we're going to, it doesn't really matter which one you do first, but you've got to remember that whichever one you do, these wire feeders. Now I got this from an auction, a car auction, and I think they cost like five, five euros. They were absolutely nothing, and they are brilliant. They are basically little connections, little pipes that screw together, as you can see they screw together, but they're flexible. And you can put these through holes and push the wires out the other end. So, what I'm going to do is, I've got the little hook on this end. And if I just pull the camera back, hopefully you'll be able to see all this. So what I'm going to do is, with the little hook end, feed the hook down here. Now, it's probably a bit tricky until I find... As we can see, it's come out there, so we need to get it in behind the carpet. Now, so as you can see, I've now got it there. Hopefully that's coming through. So all I'm going to do is grab my wire, tape it to the hook. So I've just simply taped it. Hope you can see that. Taped it to the hook. Now you do have to be careful. 
make sure everything's not getting caught or anything. Getting caught there somewhere. So and as we can see, I have the wire through there very easy. Very simple, I haven't broken anything, because otherwise you'd be doing a lot of swearing and things normally get broke. So I'm going to be using this to feed through, so I've got to feed through all the carpets, all the seats and everything to get to the battery. But like I said, we're not going to worry about that yet. So at least I have this here now. I'm just going to disconnect it from the box for the minute. And yeah, so we know we can leave the box in and around there, so we've got plenty of wire. But what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to cut this wire, I'm going to leave plenty of wire on it. Just in case you need to pull out the box and you've got plenty of room to work on. If I cut the wire, I'm trying to work on the box inside there and it's just too difficult. So I'm just going to leave myself plenty of wire so I can work on the box out there. You can neatly wrap the wire up and put it away, it just makes your life a lot easier. Now if you're unsure of the pinouts on your tow bar, you can download or go on the internet and find out what pinouts do what. And it is very easy, there's a little card here and you can see yellow is the left hand indicator, blue is the fog light, white is the earth, green is the right hand indicator and so on. So it's very simple of what to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get everything ready, I'll turn the camera back on once I've got all my connections, tools and everything, we'll go through it all and then we'll start wiring this up. Now I don't have all the connections with me so I'm going to have to finish this off tomorrow, but at least we can get half the box wired in, we can get the wires from the battery back. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to leave these wires long, so I'm just going to plug that in, to give me an idea, and if I cut that about there, that gives us plenty of wire. So what I need to do now is I'm going to put the wires into the box, the wires from the tow bar into the box. And I'm just going to got my wire strippers here, these are brilliant these ones. So what they'll actually do is they'll just strip, as you can see, just the wire part off. And they're self-adjusting, so as you can see I went from that thickness. I just need to take a bit more off there, so I just shove that in. That's about as thick as it will take. All right. The idea, and then I can go down straight down to one to to wire that size. Just press it, and as you can see, instantly it does it for me. So we are going to get each one of these out. And just cut the wire off. That's it. One more. Back one. Yeah. Now I have a double skin inside here, so I might be able to earth it to the actual car because I can't see any other place where I can white wire out of here. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, start wiring it in. The first one I'm going to wire in is B, because A is reverse, there's no wire here for reverse, there's no, so we're not going to really worry about reverse, we're going to go for fog. Fog, again if you're unsure you come to here, so fog is blue. So we need to get the blue wire, make sure it's twisted together, and very simply put it into B. It's a bit too long, so I'm just going to trim back some of it off because you, you don't want any of the wire sticking out you want it you want the you don't want
don't want any wire sticking out, you want the actual um, rubber part to be flush with the connection so nothing can happen. Next one is brake light, so again you're unsure you come to red, you need to get the red one out, twist it together and I have to cut a bit off the edge because it's going to be too long, put it in to C, screw it down, right so the next one is right hand side light and the right hand side light is brown so we get the brown one the little Phillips screwdriver is what I'm using next one is left hand side light now this one is black but this one does the left hand side light and the number plate light so this one kind of does both and what most people forget to do when they're wiring a tow bar is they forget to replace the fuses in your car because for example you've got your indicator running but when you run your left hand indicator you're you're using another bulb now your indicator isn't really a problem what sometimes can cause a problem is, is your light so your, your left and your right light because it, it, there's, there's basically depending on what tow what, what you're towing there could be between two and four extra bulbs turning on so it's a good thing just to put a slightly higher fuse in that socket of your car next one is right hand indicator so the right hand indicator is green and the last one is the left hand indicator and the left hand indicator should be yellow which it is so you know you're definitely right because you've got the right color left now nothing to it that's that's the box wired up um, from the tow bar now we still need to do with the separate earth and the separate power and obviously to the lights but that's that's one part of it done you could say we do also have to be careful we need this box so it's not moving around now in this specific car we have this sponge so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the sponge when we get it in place and I'm just going to put a couple of cable ties just to hold it into the sponge so we can't really go anywhere if you can see that it can't it's not going to be just rattling around getting hit and the wires pulling out but I can't do this, I can't do the headlight, the actual light, unfortunately for the minute because I haven't got the right connections. But what I am going to do is I'm going to run the wires from the battery all the way to the back. Now I'm not going to film it because it's just going to be very long and very boring. All I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to run the wires through all these panels. So I'm going to have to uh, let down the back seats, run the wire through the panels underneath the seats. So on the side of the carpet where it meets the door, I'm going to run the wire all in behind there, connect it to the battery. I'll show you the connection to the battery. I just won't show you me hiding it because it's just it's going to take too long and it's just boring. It's just common sense. You need to put your wire underneath your carpet where it can't be get at, it can't be cut, nothing can trap it. But I'll show you the connections at the battery and I'll show you the connections once we get it to here. Now, ah, this is day two. I have the parts I need, so I've got the scotch locks. This is the wire coming from the battery I'll show you that later I'm just going to wire in this part of the car now so the actual what we're going to do is we're going to wire in the part coming from the box coming out of the box to the car's electrics we're going to wire that in once we've done that we'll plug in the two wires from the battery and then that's our tow bar done simple as that really now if you're unsure on on cars the wires are not going to match the same color as what you get in your tow bar but all the tow bar wires are always the same and there's a the little card like I said you can download that from the internet it's not a problem so what we need to do we need to work out which is the brake light which is the indicator the left indicator the right indicator now the left hand indicator we are going to have to get from the other side so we're going to have to run a wire all the way to the side that is a bit frustrating but we can do all the other wires here so the easiest way to do it you need some sort of electrical tester I'm using this fella this is there's just no wires 
Um, you can use a voltmeter or anything like that, but I'm not going to. Now, as you can see, when I put it in through here, nothing comes on because I have nothing turned on. I'm going to do the right-hand indicator first. Now, I have the right-hand indicator on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in until I see the little ball at the end flashing. Which we can now see, I don't know if the camera is showing that. So we now know the right hand indicator is this blue and red wire. So again, you can see that flashing. So I now know, and I need to get on this sheet here, the right hand indicator. Now it's important you get these right. So the right hand indicator is green. So I need to get the green wire, put it up to the blue one. Get my scotch lock, put the green wire in, and then the blue one. A lot trickier on camera for some reason. So you want to make sure you got both of them in. And simple, squeeze the little bar down in the middle, and what that does is that little bar cuts into the two wires which bridges them, so it makes them work together. That's essentially it. So then come down to here and just clip it down. Now to make sure that that's working properly, we can then come to the actual clip that goes into the box. We get the green wire, which is here. And the same thing again, as we can see, the light is flashing. So we know we're getting power to the box. So that's a good thing. Next one we're going to do is the side lights. So I turn, I turn the side lights on. Again, we need to just go along with this. Now we can see the first one is lit up. I just like to go on all of them to make sure only one is lit up. So you know the first one is lit up, which is there. So the first one is this orange wire. So we need to pull out the orange wire here. Now what we need to do, we need to get the, where are we looking now? the number plate light and the left hand tail light. So we need the right hand tail light and the left hand tail light. So we need brown and black to connect to these two. Because that means then once the light turns on both lights left and right turn on. This is the, this is the one I was saying that you need to put a bigger fuse in. Because um, this is only designed to run one. We're going to be running three or four bulbs off this one. So always stick a bigger fuse in this particular one. And then you won't have a problem. The way I do it. I'm going to chop the black one in half. So I'm going to join the black one and the brown one together first. Do it together. And then I'm going to join the brown and the orange one together. Now. So again, we go back to the plug. We should have power on the black and the brown wire. So we need to find the black is there and the brown, so the two of these two in the middle. We should have power coming to both of these now. So as we can see, we've got power going, that's the black one. And we've got power going to the brown one. So we've got power going to both of them, which is good. So we know we're okay there. So at least we know, and it's always a good thing to check this. So when you plug it into the box, you know you you know you're working. You're not you know if if you're not working, you can you can look at this kind of straight away. Now I'm going to do the fog light next. Now a lot of people forget to do the fog light, and it's important, especially if you're towing lights of caravans and stuff like that, because they do have fog lights on them. Most well, a lot of the little trailers don't, but it's always best to wire it in. It's it's no it's no harm. So I've turned the fog light on. I've just I've swapped to my um, tester here, just so you can you can see. I think it's a little bit easier to see when it actually lights up. Now the only problem is you have to be careful of you don't when you turn your fog light on, your side lights are on. So you need to remember that this top one here is your side light, and the next power is the fog light. You don't want to mix them up because you, if you put them all to, on one of them, your fog light is going to turn on when you just put your normal lights on. So we now know the fog light is this green one here green and yellow wire on the car and it's the blue wire from the electrics of the tow bar so make sure both wires are in before you crimp it down and crimp it down 
Right, so we've now done the fog light. So, again, we're going to double check on here that we've got everything okay. So we should have the side lights and the fog light on. So we should have power to black, brown and blue. So let's just try that again. So as you can see, that's the brown one. That's the black one and the blue one is over here. So as you can see we didn't have power, so we're just going to go back, I just took the scotch lock off and it didn't actually crimp the wire, so the wire looks a bit small, so we'll try again, see what happens this time, push it back in, this just gets, it's getting fiddly now because all the scotch locks and everything are, put it in again. And as we can see, this time it had worked. So if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. That's why you double check things. You don't want to put everything back together and then realize nothing's working. So it's always best to double check things first. Now we've only got two wires left. We have the left hand indicator, which we can't get from this side, but we have the brake light. Now we can get the brake light from this side. So I'm going to wedge the brake pedal with a bar. Right, so I've wedged the brake pedal with the bar between the brake pedal and the seat, turn everything else off. So we now know it's the green and black wire on the car. So we need to get this out. And it should be the red wire on the uh, tow bar electrics, which is here. Let's put them together. Close it down. Nice and simple. Double check on the plug that we got it right. So it's the red wire should now have power is this one and as we can see the red one now has power so we're okay there there's just one more wire left the earth we're going to earth the box separately so the box gets earth we don't need this white wire here that's the earth we're going to earth the box and we're also going to earth the um the one from the tow box we're going to do all that separately so we, we don't need this all we need now is this yellow one which is the left hand indicator which is an awkward one now this is the problem with wires this is what takes the time I had to take the other headlight or the other backlight off feed the wire hide it in behind all this plastic take the plastic off not only that as you can see we've had to take the plastic off the back here so all this had to come off I'm going to run the wire here because I think it's best to run it this side the reason is once this plastic's on, it's not in the way of the cat. It's not going to be here, so it's not going to get caught in the way where you put the spare wheel on and off. And it's not going to really get damaged. And then we've had to come all the way across here, all the way in. And now I'm going to have to feed it back up through here. And this is just to get the left hand indicator working. And so when you go to someone and he charges you, an amount to do something, especially wiring, and you think to yourself, how much? That's why, because it just takes so long to do. Now, it doesn't matter which one we use, I'm just gonna use the blue one, and remember to use the blue one on the far side, because otherwise, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna put these two together, with a scotch lock. Now, the only thing you have to be careful with scotch locks is, make sure the wire isn't sticking out the end, because when you turn sunk on, that wire is gonna be powered and then you're going to have a problem. So what we need to do now is we need to find out which is the left hand indicator. So I've turned on the left hand indicator and we have to now try and find it. Um, well we're lucky we got it first time. You can see that it's like the power is going on and off, on and off, on and off. So we now know that the blue one, that's just a coincidence, the blue one is the uh, Indicate blue wire, blue wire, crimp it. Then we need to go over here to make sure we've got the connection right. The yellow wire, oh, put my finger out of the way. We are getting power, so we're okay now. That's sorted, so that's good. I just need to put 
I'm going to put the lights and everything back together now and then we'll continue with the next part. Now it's typical my soldering iron isn't working and uh, my portable soldering iron is at home so I have no choice but to do it this way. I will be soldering these connections later on but at the minute I'm just going to use bullet connections and uh, I'm going to have to be done with that. It's going to get me to be able to finish this job and then worry about that later. So I'm just going to put the bullet connections on. I always find it's best to use vice grips for these connections and just give it a good squeeze. Like I said, I will be, always a good thing just to check it, I will be using solder connections for these but this will get it out of a hole for the minute. I am going to be soldering these. Now it's a 10mm spanner, I'm going to connect this. Now it's so important when you connect anything like this, make sure there's no fuse in it. Because just in case there's something happened at the far end. So I'm just going to connect this now with no fuse in it. So it's not going to work, but I can check all the other wires before I put the fuse in. Just to make sure I've got everything right before I uh, do it. So I'm just going to put that in. Now this is where I'm going to see exactly where I want this. I'm not going to put pressure on it. So I think there be nice and neat. Gives you plenty of room to get to the fuse just in case you're having problems with the fuse. That there is now good. Right, so like I said, I'm not going to put a fuse in that yet. Um, even though it's connected, there's no fuse in, so there's no power going to that wire. I'm going to double check everything on the box before I put a fuse. It's a 15 amp fuse we need to put in here. And uh, so we're just going to double check everything, then put the fuse in and see if it all works. The thing is, we're not actually ready to put the wire in at the minute anyway, because I still need to get an earth. There's our wire. This uh, white wire is in earth, but I also need to earth this as well. Now, I'm going to use a really nifty gadget for an earth because I've no real screw here. There's nothing here that I can use as an earth. So what I am going to do, I'm going to use one of these things. Now, I can't remember the exact name of them, but it's, it's almost like a pot rivet. And what it does is, with this special tool, which again, kind of looks like a pot rivet, what it does is you drill a hole into, into a, a, any, any steel really or anything, even wood. And as you crimp this down, this leads a thread. You, cannot, you can't really see it, but it leaves a threaded bolt or a threaded hole behind it, which will allow you to screw in a bolt. Now, what I'm gonna do is because, hopefully you can see, because this is double skinned in here, I'm gonna drill a hole about here, which is not gonna affect the outside of the car, I'm going to put this in which will leave a threaded hole behind which then I can attach my earth cables to which I'm then earthing it to the car. Um, they're absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to do that now. I'll show you that and I'll show you what it leaves behind. They're absolutely fantastic. Now you have to be very careful when you do this. You need to make sure you've got a double skin because otherwise you're going to be drilling straight through your car which isn't a good thing. you also got to make sure there's nothing in behind here. There's no wires, there's no pipes and you can kind of check, you know, you, you just need to know, you just need to be very careful. And the other thing is you don't want to push too hard with the drill. Because once it goes through one skin, if you push too hard, you're going to dint the outside skin and you're going to see it and it's going to look horrible. So, you do have to be careful. You also need a sharp drill bit. Okay, now what that's done is, I can now fit this, and once I squeeze that together, that's left me a hole, with, well that's left me a threaded hole, and because it's onto the car, it's already earthed. Now, I am going to just get a little bit of sandpaper just to scratch this, just give me a bit more of a key. Now. And like I said, there's all different types of sizes of threads. This is an M 
10 I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread this onto the little tool so you can see and it crimps just exactly like uh, a pot rivet does except it just leaves the threads behind it. Now this might be the awkward part physically getting it in but hopefully it's going to be okay. Now I don't know if you can see that but I should now be able to screw a bolt into that. As we can see, that bolt will now screw in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check just to make sure that we, it is a good enough earth. And the easiest way I'm going to do that, I'm going to put my tester to it. I'm going to turn on the lights, the actual driving lights of the car or the parking lights. And if this lights up, I know that's a good enough earth. Right, so we have the lights on. Turn this on. I'm not sure which one it is again, so it's going to go through them all. And there we go, it was the first one. So, I now know that that is a good enough earth. I can connect my earth from my tow bar. And I can also connect the earth to this box. And it's a really good connection. All I'm going to have to do, or maybe don't. No, okay. I thought I might just have to... Um, cut down the bolt a bit but I don't have to. It's a really handy way of threading something if it's not thick enough to be threaded. It's, it's really as simple as that. But when you look at it, it looks just like it's supposed to be there. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I just can't remember the name of them but they are brilliant. So I'm now going to put my earth connections together and uh, yeah, sort it. Right, I'm now ready to start connecting everything. This earth isn't tight yet, but they're there. So I've doubled the wires up just to make them that bit thicker. Because again, two cord wire. It's important to put the earth in first into this box. The right one. I need to cut a bit more off that. put this in before I go any further. Screw this home. Now, I mean just look how neat that is. You know, lovely, nice and neat. If you need to get to it, you can get to it. You can take that in and out. I've seen people use self-tappers and the problem is self-tappers aren't great for a start, not for this. And if you take it in and out a couple of times, that's it, it's lost its threads. You can take that in and out loads of times, you're not going to have a problem with it. Now, next thing we need to do is connect the power wire. Now, like I said, I haven't put the fuse in, so there's no power going to these wires. And not only that, I haven't connected the light. You don't connect the light yet. We have to test this box. Make sure they're going to the 12 volt, which they are. Need to cut a bit more off. It's okay. Shove them in. I would prefer if they left a bigger gap between the two wires, personally. Now, there's a special way of testing this to make sure you've got this properly done. So I'm just going to pull them wires to make sure they're not, they are connected properly, which they are. I haven't connected these wires yet, and I'm not going to. So now what we need to do is, is test this unit to make sure everything's okay. But right, as you can see, I've got my little uh, tester on the earth that I made. And I'm going to put the fuse in. You should hear a couple of bleeps out of the box. I have to start the car and I have to test to see if we've got a 12 volt supply coming in here. Uh, and this is all before I put this, this wire in. So I'm going to do that now. So we now need to check we've got a 12 volt as we can see we have um, so that's okay that's from the battery so we know we're good there now what we need to do is turn it off take the fuse back out 
and plug the wires. So now we can connect the wires and we need to check this in a certain way. Um, I can't remember the way off the top of my head so I'm going to get the instructions and see what they say but you have to turn press the brakes first and turn the lights on. I can't remember exactly but we'll go through it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the fuse back in and start the car. Now just before I start the car I've got this little gadget here and it tells me left and left light, right light, indicator, stop light and fog light. And what it does is I'm going to plug this into the, the tow bar system and as I, press the, as I press the stop light or the indicator these lights should line up so I then know if I've wired, the, if I've wired it in properly. Start it. It says side lights first, right turn the side lights on, number 7 and 5, both of should turn on. Hey, hey. So they're on. This now is telling me, this is not only is it telling me the box is working, this is also telling me the plug for the tow bar is working as well. Now the left hand indicator, yeah, that's good, hopefully that's coming through. Now the right hand, yep, yeah, again. Now that's flashing quick because I haven't put the light back on yet, so don't worry about that. Great light. Hey. And now the fog. And there we go. So that's it. We're all working. So we know we've got the box right. Now we've got to tidy everything up. Now, so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to tidy all these wires up. I've got some cable ties on here just to stop them. All getting rattled around. Now they're all nice and tidy and neat together. You can see all this here. Now we know all this is good as well. So we know our earth's okay. We know our box is okay. Now I do need to set this box into this foam. But before I do that, I need to put another box in for the caravan socket. So I need to put this in, but that's going to be the next video and then I'm going to put the bumper and everything back in on the final part. So I'm going to call it there for this video. If you want to see how I put this in, then you're going to have to watch the last, of the, the, the last part of the last video. So yeah, that's how to wire in a tow bar with a CAN bus vehicle. Don't forget, check out my shop and uh, hope it helps, thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget, get your hands dirty, see you for the next one.